A new deal for Dak Prescott. The Jets make their 2024 debut. We got a lot to cover here today on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast. You are Locked On NFL Scouting with the Draft Dudes, your daily podcast for NFL and college football scouting. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's better than this? It's guys being dudes here on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast. We're the Draft Dudes. I'm Joe Marino from Locked On Bills. He's Kyle Krabs from Locked On Dolphins. And we are your NFL experts here with you daily to talk team building across the league on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast with the Draft Dudes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Want to issue a big thank you, shout out, and welcome to our everydayers. Those of you who never miss a single episode, we appreciate y'all being here. Very, very much. Joe, happy Tuesday. Good morning to everyone other than Mike Greenberg, I guess. I don't know. Like, have you seen a more? Have you seen? Brothers crashing out to the likes of what you've never seen for a week one contest against the defending NFC championship representative. Well, Kyle Krabs, imagine being at the center of the football media world and driving, being the conductor of the New York Jets hype train. Starting up every always episode, running get hot. up on, on network television every morning, talk about his, his Aaron Rodgers jersey. Going to go put on my Aaron jersey. We're going undefeated and winning the Super Bowl. Come on, man. Here. So that was the energy all offseason. I want to read a few tweets from Mike Greenberg last night. So you can right. just understand the magnitude of how bad. Oh, he was. Was, what, was he? Well, he was tweeting through it. Yeah. Oh, Robert boy. Sala's defense has allowed points on seven straight drives with Christian McCaffrey inactive. Hashtag Jets. Joe Douglas, who gutted the defensive line to acquire a player everyone know, knew needed a new deal, is having a very bad night. San Francisco is going to do this to a lot of people. They're very good, but the Jets want us to believe they're an elite defense tonight. They're most certainly not getting pushed around and out schemed with CMC and Street Close deflating. Aaron Rodgers looks good. Robert Sala's defense is getting shredded. Uh, last one. Aaron Rodgers looks fine. Robert Sala, Joe Douglas, not so much. Niners are elite, but you at least wanted the Jets to look like they were in their weight class on this night. They were not. Out coached, out man, out played, out fought. Deflating. Used the word deflating, I think, three times last night on post. Now it's week one. Okay. So week one. An, it's an important thing to be mindful of. Not a ball game left. There's a lot of ball game left, but Kyle Krabs, if you didn't see the possibility of this type of outcome, then your fan goggles are too thick or you're too willing to live in media driven narratives that aren't rooted in anything that's actually foundationally true. The business side of the Jets operation has been really bad for a number of years. Aaron Rodgers hadn't played quarterback in a very, very long time, especially at a high level. There's a lot that has to come together for this New York Jets team. Now they're fortunate their schedule is very soft moving forward for the next, you know, couple months. So they'll have a chance to right the ship. But this was always within the realm of possibilities in my mind as a guy who didn't pick the Jets to go to the playoffs this year because I thought to myself, this team defensively is not what it's been talent-wise over the last several years, especially when it comes to the defensive line. The entire hallmark of this defense has been they rotate a deep and talented group of defensive linemen, and they're rostering three undrafted free agents. That tells you exactly what you need to know about the lack of depth that they have up front. And I think you saw that really get exposed against the 49ers in week one. Well, and I think the worst thing that probably could happen for Jets fans that have high expectations for the team is for Christian McCaffrey to have it drop 90 minutes before the game that he's not going to play. This is like, oh, now we we right. got him now. Right. <laughs> right. Take it to another level, baby. We got yep. this one. Yeah, one like, and oh. Yeah. And trust me, as as the guy who played against the 49ers and Jimmy G goes down and says, missed your irrelevance in a quarterback for the first time in his career, we're looking real good. I think we're going to win this game. We didn't win the game. Brock Purdy looked really good. And guess what? He's looked good since. So uh, we'll see what that means for Jordan Mason, who ran his rear end off looking like Marion Barber out there last night. But um, <laughs> that that team... With in spite of the questions, they they got all the right pieces back with Ayuk, who didn't have his best game, and Trent Williams back. 
they just have so many different ways that they can come at you. I think the the bigger story out of this game, though, was the Jets' offense against the 49ers' defense, which we had some questions about before the season. Talk yeah. about Aaron Rodgers. So I guess that's a good way to get us into Rodgers and his return and that side of things. Well, if you want to get excited about Aaron Rodgers, I think, first of all, he he said it himself. He's like, it feels good to finish a game. But then he did have the drive, the three-throw drive, where it's like, okay, yep, there it is, right? Still still capable of making some of the most beautiful throws you've ever seen in the history of your life. And that happened on one drive. But collectively, it just wasn't a very synced-up offense. And, I mean, I think you saw a really inspired effort from the 49ers. I mean, Fred Warner was playing out of his mind. Um, but the Jets are an offense that's it's under-repped, right? Like, how many how many game reps does this team have together over the last two years? Trying right. to thing it's at the top i mean these things matter it, you know it's not basketball man you don't just show up and run iso and pick and roll man there's timing and there's a lot of uh, elements to being a successful offensive operation and it's hard to do right off the bat especially when you're under repped well and you saw that across the league i i think that was a league-wide uh, i think the the numbers overwhelmingly down in week one as far as passing numbers lowest in a long like a time decade. yeah you know like like a really long time and i that that's not a coincidence where everybody's reps that they're getting collectively. You see more joint practice reps and less preseason reps for a lot of, a lot of teams. That's still a controlled environment. Right. There's still, you know, extra conversations that can be had instead of true game simulation type things. There's uh, not as much contact and going to the ground. So yeah, I, I think the fluidity of those, you know, maybe that's the, the right bridge between practice and training camp and, the actual games, but uh, I'm not surprised beyond the Jets that that this was a league wide thing. I, I think the bigger challenge for New York, and they drew a tough assignment with the talent that San Francisco has up front. They didn't really have a lot of success moving defenders and creating push in the run game, despite all of the new pieces: new left tackle, new swing tackle, new left guard, new right tackle. Right? They, they, this was a second year player into a Tipman at center that was supposed to make the leap and Elijah Vera Tucker returning from injury. This was a totally new look offensive line. It looked like a new look offensive line. Uh, they, they averaged, I think 2.7 yards per carry on first downs really struggled to, to get ahead of the sticks. And uh, that's something they will need to address and fix moving forward. If they want to, uh, right the ship and kind of have the balance that I think they'll need to get the best out of Aaron. Well, and and obviously a very narrow focused passing operation in terms of target distribution. I mean, through the ball to Lazard, Wilson, and Hall. That's literally it. I mean, did did Aaron Rodgers target anyone else? <laughs> I'm serious. Like uh, you... we had Tyler Conklin got two. Let's be fair, and Braylon Allen got one. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was from Tyrod Taylor. Late in the game. Oh, yeah. Good and I lost my fantasy matchup because of that last oh, garbage no. touchdown. Yeah, I had the 49ers defense. I was up by two points, and they they scored that touchdown, and it, it took three points off, and I lost my fantasy matchup because Gerard, of that. Rod, the, the gift that keeps on giving you know, for a lifelong Bills fan, you know? You know, gosh. Thanks for ending the drought, though, Tyrod. I'll never, I'll never <laughs> forget it. <laughs> All right. We got plenty more to get into, including this uh, this big contract extension for Dak Prescott, folks. Be sure to stick with us. No man wants to lose his hair, but for men, it's actually very common. And now with Hims, the solution is simple. Try Hims Hair Loss Solutions. You'll be joining hundreds of thousands of subscribers who got their flow back. Hims provides access to a range of hair loss treatments that work all from the comfort of your couch. Hims makes treating hair loss simple with doctor trusted treatment options and clinically proven ingredients like finasteride and minoxidil that can regrow hair in as little as three to six months. They offer personalized chewables, oral spray, and serum treatment options so you can find what works best for you. The process is very simple, 100% online. You answer a few questions, and a medical provider will determine if treatment is right for you. And if prescribed, the treatments are sent directly to your door. So start your free online visit today at hymns.com slash locked on NFL. That's H I M S dot com slash locked on NFL for your personalized hair treatment loss options. Hims.com slash locked on NFL results vary based on studies of topical and, mono, and oral minoxidil prescriptions. Products require an online consultation with healthcare provider who will determine 
if a prescription is appropriate. Restrictions apply. See website for full details and important safety information. As a consumer of these products, they do work, by the way. I'm going to regret I'm going to regret doing this, uh, but Oh like no. That, that, that's that's real oh, hair. Yeah, no, Kyle, that's real hair. Kyle Krabs with the with the flow here. It it didn't used to be like this. Oh, look at that, man. What's a So wow. I I've been accused of hair pieces on my YouTube comments. Oh man, you you got some people after you for stuff. I I and it's <laughs> like, dude, I don't I could I could wear my hair in any style and I'm still going to get a comment every week on, on the YouTube channel. I have no idea why. Very I'm wonderful. Like, oh, I'm just a guy that's enjoying having his hair back. So good for you, man. All right, that's workable. We're gonna Kyle. There's there's a obviously a huge contract extension that went out in the NFL really? over the weekend, and, and of course I'm referring to Blake Bill Ferguson? Bill's right tackle uh, Spencer Brown. Spencer Brown, uh, <laughs> big deal. What are the terms? What were the nobody terms knows, that? Kyle Krabs. Nobody <laughs> knows. I just saw a four year extension. That's all I've seen. Kyle, I've been waiting for like five days. And which tells me that maybe the numbers aren't as big as we expected because they kind of slip it. Right. Like if it's a big deal, they want it known. That agency that repped the third round pick out of Northern Iowa, they want the world to know what those mon- that those dollars are. And for some right. reason, it's a it's a, a big mystery in the world. But obviously, jokes aside, uh Dak Prescott getting the deal done like was it like a half an hour before the one o'clock st- slate yeah. starts on Sunday afternoon? Four years, $250 million extension with the Dallas Cowboys. Signing bonus of $231 million, or excuse me, uh, guaranteed is $231 million. And Kyle Krabs, here's your bouquet of flowers. You've been saying $60 million for Dak, uh, I think, for the last year, and you were absolutely right about that. Well, yeah, just the, the bigger thing for me was we did a show at the end of June, and it was covering Jordan Love, Tuatonga Valoa, and Dak Prescott. And we saved Dak Prescott for last in that show. And the thought process was it was a more complicated process. Dak was, has been tenured in the league. He's not getting a second contract. The dynamics of the Cowboys. Um, and the, the, the observation that I had was, I don't know what number Dallas could put in front of me that would convince me to sign before the season. Because I have a very large body of work if I'm Dak Prescott. I'm comfortable with the prospect of free agency. I know what happens if I reach the open market. I know how crazy those offers are going to be for my services. Dallas has personnel questions. Dallas has coaching staff questions. You made the observation, oh, that there's there's a lot of leverage that, that Dak can impose here. And the longer this goes, the more leverage he gets. Well, the answer is a 96% guaranteed contract that'll get me to the table to sit down and sign the deal. Uh, $1 million more than Deshaun Watson's fully guaranteed contract. Mm. That feels like that was on purpose. Insane insane guarantees in this contract. $231 million guaranteed out of a $240 million contract. You can, you kind of just feel like you threw Jerry a bone and said you don't have to guarantee the last nine million. We'll just take one more than Deshaun got. It's a beautiful thing to have leverage. It's certainly a, a winding path to get there, but Dak finally was in a very advantageous position, and he I think he probably held their feet to the fire. He's like you can pay me this, or guess what? Someone else is going to on the open market. And you know the Vegas Raiders over there? There's no state income tax in the state of Nevada. Right. I think I might go there. He had all the leverage, especially when this quarterback class that's rising feels like it's it's pretty questionable. And Dallas will be a decent team, right? They're not going to be like in striking zone to, to get a quarterback. They'd have to trade up pretty significantly to do that. And so Dak very clearly had the leverage, and we have another massive reset of the quarterback market. And, I mean, that there's a whole other conversation to be had there if that's becoming a little bit unhealthy or not. But I don't know what more Dak could have done last year um, in terms of the way he played and the way he produced that would make him not the guy that should trump all these other guys that just signed extensions. You know what's crazy? So we, we have this dollar amount, $60 million APY, $240 million. It was $129 guaranteed at signing, and the $231 guaranteed is practical guarantees, and, and that, that includes dollars that are injury guaranteed at signing. But it's like 
fifth day of the league year in March 2025 to 2026 salary fully guarantees and it's injury guaranteed at signing. And it's like that for 26, 27, and then part of 2028. Um, if you look at this contract through the lens of my favorite stat pertaining percentage, to right? percentage of the cap, do you have it? Do you know what it is? Don't look if you don't. Um, okay. Do you know? I don't think I do. Where Where do you think it ranks? Where, where do you think a $60 million contract ranks against a $255.4 million salary cap in the hierarchy and rankings of quarterback contracts measured in average per year and what percent that is of the current year salary cap when the contract is signed? I'm pretty sure it's third. Josh Allen's two. And is it Burrow or Lawrence that's one? Joe Burrow is number one. And, and Allen's two. And is it Prescott three? Joe Burrow won 24.47 average percentage of cap at signing Josh Allen, number two, 23 and a half percent average percent of cap at signing Dak Prescott, number three, 23.49% average cap at signing Justin Herbert four, 23.35% average cap at signing. And then Lamar Jackson is the only other one above 23%. Because Trevor Lawrence got the Joe Burrow dollars with a salary cap that was 20 something million dollars higher. Trevor Lawrence is tied for 10th with Jordan Love. Yeah. So go ahead. No, go ahead. I was kind of I was wanting to transition into like what's next for the quarterback market. Yeah, let's do that. Because I think you're at this spot where don't go shopping in free agency. Best of luck to the Giants and the and the Raiders. You're not going to get an option. Quality option free agency, right? Yeah. I, well, I think the next guy's Brock, right? After the season. Have we checked all the boxes right now? Of I mean, every imaginable quarterback that's ready for a new deal feels like they got it. And we remember we had this lull in 2020. I mean, really, mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, 2021, notwithstanding Trevor Lawrence, 2022, 2023, where you just don't feel like you've you've gotten guys that we're going to be talking about in the same stratosphere. Of course, eventually CJ Stroud will, will be part of that yeah. mix. But the guy right in the dangling guy is Brock Purdy, and he's not even extension eligible until after the season, right? So I think we're kind of good for now, but it's Purdy's the next guy. And I think other than that, it's probably I think the Bills obviously have to look at Josh Allen at 43 million APY. <laughs> and and uh at some point they got to do something with that to get him. Uh, closer to where, I mean, where the other top quarterbacks are. And and he was asked about that this offseason, certainly had the right messaging and said, I'm not really worried about that. I'm focused on winning a Super Bowl. I've had my day. I'm happy for everyone else that's having their day. And my day, again, will come. So, but the, you, you, you can hardly, yeah, he stands I mean, out, man. I mean, <laughs> he it, stands it, out. It's one of the biggest bargain contracts in all football. And, and kudos to Buffalo for betting on Josh as early as they did with a six-year contract extension. The length was mat mattered a lot there, yeah. You know, but uh, from cash received, first year in 2021, it was $20 million. In 2022, it was 46.9. Last year, it was 28. This year is 30. It, 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 to get Josh Allen for 28 and $30 million last year and this year combined, it's one of the best cash bargain deals, in, and that trickles down to the cap, right? Right. You, you got Dak got an eight was an eighty million dollar signing bonus. Eighty. Jared Goff got a seventy two million dollar signing bonus. Jared Goff got a bigger, got fifteen million dollars more in a signing bonus than Josh Allen's collecting in ca total cash received over this year and last year combined. <laughs> you right? wonder, right? So, <laughs> yeah, that's that's the biggest one. Like I have spot rack up. They do the player projected player valuations. They've they've got Josh pegged at sixty and a half. And I think if Josh Allen did a contract right now, he probably should come in above Dak Prescott. Now, I think Dak Prescott probably had the Cowboys in a more rough spot to yeah. take advantage of it. But I think if you're just comparing the body of works, I, I do think Josh just speaks for itself. And he's got – how many more years does Josh have on his deal, like his current deal? Uh, four? 20, 28. He's got four years left on his deal. Five. <laughs> 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. So – Five, including this year, four. Yes. Yeah, okay. Four, four future years. And you have the deal in front of you. Do, you. do you feel like 
with Mahomes, they just took a bunch of money later in the deal, moved it up and guaranteed it. I don't know that that's really set up that way for Josh. Uh, so for Josh, because they've restructured it so many different times. I mean, probably three or four times already. Right. So it's, a, which it's, the length gave them that opportunity. So from a cap perspective, you look at it through both cap and cash perspectives, uh, from a salary cap perspective, because they have restructured Josh, they restructured Josh in 22, 23, and to a lesser degree in 24, they didn't max restructure him, but right. they, they knew how much budget they wanted to open up. And that's what they did. Um, the nice thing about this deal is there's no void years on it at all. Right. Yet. <laughs> and right. You, if you know a third contract's coming for Josh Allen, take all the void years you want. Right. And, and put, put as much into it as you want. Um, he's got a $60 million cap hit due next year with $14 million in base salary. And then he's also scheduled to get $25 million roster bonus and then he's five hundred thousand dollar workout bonus so next year he's due for 39 and a half um with a 60 million dollar cap hit you could push that around i mean you, you really this really won't get backed up for them until 2028 2027 they've got a yeah. lot of flexibility with with this because of how they, i mean he's getting next year is the first year he gets into the lump sum roster bonuses that they have assigned for him. And have, I mean, have you seen the, the DAC cap hits Dak's cap hit next year is $89 million. Okay. But that's by design, right? I haven't looked at you would, it. Yet. You would I'm think, pulling, yeah, I'm pulling you, it up right now. you would think that's by design. I would assume but, they left a lot of base salary in there. Yeah. 47.75 million dollar base salary for 2025. So they'll do the restructure and create a they'll, they'll bunch of cap space, magically create $35 million in cap space. And everybody's going to say, the salary cap is fake. I can't believe it. And <laughs> it happens every year, right? But it, the I think I've I think I've spun on this kind. I know we got to go to break. I think we've I've spun on contract structure. You remember when the Jalen Hurts got deal got done, and we're like, love this, love this for Philly, love how they prorated out all the years in advance, and there's just rolling guarantees. I think I kind of like this. Should we talk about more why after the break? Yeah, we, we should. And, and okay. maybe you could let me know if Jalen Hurts is actually a good quarterback or not on the other side Stop. of the breaks. So be sure to stick with us. You've heard us talk a lot about FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Well, got a little something different for you. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with a YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out of market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel at any time. Just visit FanDuel.com to download America's number one sportsbook. All right. I feel I'm glad I have something to contribute to segment three because I knew you were very heavy in rookie shout outs. And right. If we get my, there, we get there. It's, this is my right. contribution to, to segment three. I've had to live this the last nine months. Quarterback, I guess, probably 15 months. Quarterback I'm glad contract. you went to 15 months. Nine months, you know. You know, it's you've looked a lot at contracts and how they're structured and, and how they're amicable and what the players' wants are and what the team's are, what, wants are. Uh, if I had to ask you, with a mega quarterback contract, be it for Dak or somebody else, I, I won't use my quarterback's name as the example because uh, – I think him and how tailored the scheme is, it kind of takes away from this talking point. So maybe that's a breadcrumb that you can pick up on. There's always a market for these guys, right? Mm -hmm. So would you agree with the idea that tradability of a contract from a team's perspective is more important than it is for any other position? For a, a quarterback? Yes. How often are these quarterbacks getting traded, man? Did trade ability. Sell me on why I should say yes to that. Because there's always a market to get something for a quarterback. But we don't really see quarterback trades like that. Okay, though. but ig ignore the, the tangible piece of it. My okay. point is, would you rather have a contract that automatically is built in to have to pay a lump sum 
that you as the team that has the player under contract is now has five years of obligations for, or two years if you get rid of that player? Or is it easier to say, I would rather have a 47 and a half, we'll just round the numbers out, $47.5 million base salary for Dak Prescott last year, next year. And the reason being, if I want to restructure a portion of it to get budget like the Bills did with Josh Allen, I can do that. If I want to um, eat a portion of it and then restructure a part of it uh, and, and convert it into a roster bonus that's due at a later date to trade the player or, or pay the roster bonus if it's due early and then trade the player, I can. If I want to just let him play on the salary and, and eat a year's worth of salary cap versus what the cycle is of the rest of my roster, I can. Or is it just better to say, we're going to take you minimum salary and we're going to give you a lump sum and we're going to prorate it out across five years every year for the next five years automatically. That's the world I've been living in. Is option one or option two? Two. But it wasn't baked into the contract to be that way. The Jalen Hurts deal is automatically you get a minimum salary. The Bills didn't do that with Josh Allen this year. Right. I'm saying they've lived in this world of restructuring, and it's been the catalyst for getting the cap space every year. Correct. So that's option one. That's right. The, that, how they structure that's what the I meant to say. Is option one. Right. That's what you got to do, assuming your guy's good. So it gives you more flexibility on a year-over-year -year basis, whereas the Jalen Hurts deal, they have flexibility to get out of the contract, but they don't really have a lot of flexibility – with like they they max restructured everything on the front end. Well, what happens if plans change? What happens if you have a Deshaun Watson situation? The player is no longer performing at the level, and you can't get out of it, right? So, when the Jalen Hurts contract first came out, you looked at it and you're like, "Man, I really like how everything is an option bonus that they'll pay him, and they spread it out across five years against the cap." But once you make that commitment, there's no flexibility with that outside of getting out of the player's contract. Whereas a deal like the Dolphins did this with Tua's contract. He's got like a $50 million cash received schedule next year. If they want to restructure 35 million of it, they can. If they want to restructure 48 and a half million of it, they can. If they want to restructure 5 million of it, they can. If they don't want to restructure any of it, they can. And because it's more flexible, I think it gives you more avenues to move forward with the contract, but then more avenues also to get out of the contract. How much of these contrasting strategies is rooted in who the actual quarterback is? I think that should be a big piece of it because they, they gave Jalen hurts the PR win. Yeah. When he signed his contract after he took him to the super bowl after his what second year as a starter. Yeah. Well, yeah, second year starter, yeah. Yeah. Um, versus teams like Buffalo and Dallas, who know this player, they, they, they know what this player is. They know he's going to be here. They know what the floor of performance is. To be able to have more flexibility to strategize, I, I think has a lot of value instead of, hey, we want you to sign early and try and get out in front of it, but we're we're going to put a lot of loopholes in there for how you, you pay to play to get your money. What do you think? Where, where does, where does Purdy fall in this conversation? That's the most interesting one. Right. And, and it's the same chapter of the story that we just got done doing with the two, a conversation, right? I think Purdy probably next signing next off season, the cap's going to go up again. I would imagine he'll probably sit number two in APY, three if a Josh Allen readjustment gets done before Brock Purdy signs his next deal. And everybody's going to lose their you-know-what over it being probably 50, 7, six, 58. 56, $57 million. But from a – I'm going to get my calculator here. I'm not going to make a mistake. Um, Let's say it goes up to what, 270? Yeah, I think that's some of the more aggressive projections. Yeah, I could see it. So if it went up to 270 and he gets fit, let's say he gets 58. That is percentage of cap at signing 
I mean, that, that I don't think that cracks the top 10. I got to go back and find that. I had it in my, my browser history, and I've moved on to three other contracts since we talked about it. Uh, that would be 20, 21.4% would be 11th in the NFL in percent of cap at signing. If the cap goes up to 270 and Brock Purdy signs for $58 million a year. Just behind Jordan Love and Trevor Lawrence and just in front of Tua Tungvalu and Jared Goff. Gonna happen. Just get get comfortable with it. I kind of expect it to. Yeah, i I thought I thought Purdy played well last night. That throw he deserved a touchdown on that throw to Ayo. That was a freaking yeah. good throw, man. Yeah, it was a good throw. Yeah, he kind of was nice, in a rough ball. rough preseason, but I thought I thought Purdy played well last night. Well, uh, why don't why don't you just go, go down your list and shout out a couple of rookies and we'll get out of here. <laughs> I. I, it's funny because whenever I went went back and like watched film and created reels and stuff to to get familiar with week one, I, I found myself watching a lot of rookies. That's like the, kind of the most interesting stuff. And I thought I thought a lot of the offensive linemen popped. Um, Joe Walt, I thought he did a good job against Max Crosby. That was a tough assignment for his debut. Talise Fawaga, I know that Carolina doesn't have a whole lot of D line talent, but I thought he settled in really well. Zach Frazier for the Steelers was really good. Uh, when it comes to offensive line, oh, I don't have much good to say about the rookie quarterbacks, but I thought Jared Verse had him, himself one heck of a debut uh, with the Los Angeles Rams. Tavondre Sweat with the Titans looks like he's going to be a force in the middle there. Byron Murphy as well for Seattle showed up in their debut. So just want to—I mean, mostly I'm just watching trench play with with O line, D line, and want to share some of my favorite players from Week One. That's going to do it for us here today on Locked On NFL Scouting of Kyle Krabs. He is Joe Marino. We appreciate you guys for checking out the show. Make it a great rest of your day. We will be back again tomorrow. You can find us on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts.